Today I'm going to demonstrate textures. We'll look at some textures in detail and how to use them. Let's start off with this scene where we have quite a lot of textures. Basically, there are two types of textures, image-based ones and procedural textures. Let's start by looking at image-based textures. The decking is a good example. I'm right-clicking the texture in the resource manager to edit it. We can see that three of the four available channels for this texture use an image. In fact, a different image is used for color, also referred to as diffuse, reflectivity and bump. So how does this work? You'll understand when you see the images used for each of the texture channels. The diffuse map is used to paint the object. It makes it look like decking. However, to get realistic textures, some other basic properties must be controlled and that happens through grayscale images of varying darkness. For reflectivity, lighter pixels are more effective, like the screw heads. For the bump, lighter pixels stand out more, whilst darker shades make the texture appear depressed. When you work with image-based textures, make sure that the repeat pattern matches the object you are texturing. If your pattern is too small, visible tiling will likely spoil the result. Here's another example. And here's an example of a texture that doesn't tile at all. And by the way, flipping and mirroring in Photoshop will not make non-tileable textures tileable. Fortunately, RenderWorks comes with lots of high-quality previews of professional Arrowway textures for your rendering pleasure. Here is two copies of the same rendering. Well, almost. Can you see the difference? If you have a keen eye, you'll notice that in the left example, the granite top shows some visible tiling. For fine-grained patterns, it is hard to avoid this effect unless the repeat pattern is huge. RenderWorks addresses this by offering some clever procedural texturing options. In the right image, I have created the granite with one of RenderWorks' built-in noise shaders. Let's have a quick look at the settings for this. As you can see, I'm using a shader rather than an image for all three relevant channels although you can and often will mix both types. You can see the settings for the color channel on the right. The cell Voronoi is created on the fly and its speckling is completely random and therefore non-repeating. Let's have a closer look at the bump. Here's a stone wall with some bump applied through the bump channel in the texture. When you use the bump, try to get the scale right. You can have too much bump, like in this example, or too little, like the brick wall in this example, which looks like a wallpaper rather than a wall. Now, bump doesn't actually change the shape of the objects. Our stone wall silhouette looks a bit too smooth to be realistic. That's what displacement is for. With displacement mapping turned on for custom render works, the wall looks much more realistic. Displacement is also great for leafy or furry types of material, although it will cause the rendering to take longer. So, how is displacement achieved? You need to turn it on for textures by giving it a value greater than zero under the displacement option in the bump channel. Use higher detail if you have fine details and you're close to the objects. Remember that this will also increase render time. Displacement can make a huge difference when you use caustic effects and when you have uneven surfaces with reflectivity. Notice how the imperfections in the tiled surface pattern create a very realistic result. Also, the caustic reflections of the water surface will not look the same without displacement. Here's the same scene with identical rendering settings, but rendered without displacement. Reflectivity and transparency both share a common trait, and that is that they are almost never perfect. To mimic this, both channels have a parameter called blur. Blurred reflections can be used to create realistic surface reflectivity and, when used with transparency, frosted glass surfaces. If used for frosted glass, make sure to set blur to very high to get the proper results. Speaking of glass, you can create very realistic glass, as in this example, when you set the absorption properties right. Use a light green and an absorption of about 260mm to render edges green. Even up to white glass will have some degree of absorption. Here's an example of a shop fitting project. Another very special type of RenderWorks texture is grass. Despite its vocational name, you can use it for anything that's leafy or fluffy, like this hedge and, of course, any grassy surface. It doesn't show in OpenGL, so here's our intro scene again with some grass in the foreground and a U hedge made of grass plus some enhancement 
We'll see how in next week's video. Let's have a quick look at the texture for the actual grass here. In the colour channel we have grass and when we edit the grass colour shader we can see various settings for the grass's density, leaf curl etc. Notice that RenderWorks also allows you to use a bitmap which will act as a fallback if you have grass disabled for rendering but more importantly it acts as a colour filter for each of the blades growing on it. So that's all for today. Tune in next week for some advanced examples of texturing.